I'm Robin Black, and in this series, we believe it is unacceptable to describe the greatest athletes and artists on earth with simple, antiquated sound bites. This is Fight Secrets. All right, fam, 2020 is almost over, and by now, every best of special has already whined about how much 2020 sucked, and it did. But the Bellator athletes this year express themselves beautifully and violently, and I want to celebrate some of their work. We can't call this a best of because art is subjective. So these are simply some of my favorite submissions and knockouts of 2020. We're going to get this party started with a sick one. 2020 saw Vadim Nemkov become big. The Bellator light heavyweight world champion with a perfectly placed head kick. My friends, in combat, sometimes there are moments where one athlete is in a biomechanically strong position and the other athlete is off balance. That's what we see here. Nemkov takes advantage of it, touches first with the jab, and then as he slides the right hand, he'll get a reaction from that right hand. Maybe a slip, maybe a guard. Look, he pulls down on the front guard and he wraps his foot up and over top and lands the knob of his tibia bink to the head as it turns. Perfectly legal shot, elegantly set up by Vadim Nemkov, Bellator light heavyweight world champion and perhaps the very best light heavyweight fighter on planet Earth. We gotta take a look at this a couple more times. If we look from overhead, we can see the macro. We can see it all being set up. You see here as he moves, this is key to move into this position where he can now get the reaction from the right hand. He'll use that reaction to get the guard up, grab and pull down on that guard, pull it away as he lands the head kick up and over top. Look at this, bink, perfectly placed, using the body as a weapon to knock his man to the ground and then he would swarm him. Vadim Nemkov never let up on Ryan Bader, courageously fighting to get back to his feet, to stay in the fight, to carry on, soldier on, and maintain the chance to come back and win the fight, but not this time. Nemkov mercifully puts him to sleep. And in doing so, he avenged the great Fedor Emelianenko, a mentor of his and a dear, dear friend. There is so much coming from Vadim Nemkov in that absolutely stacked Bellator light heavyweight division. So much talent and Vadim Nemkov is the champion. Oh, We go from an insane knockout to a spooky submission. AJ McKee called it the McKeotine, but it is a spine crank and a vicious, vicious spine crank. Like so many submissions, it begins far before the submission itself. These elbows attacking on this angle, pushing the head to one side and attacking, that will invite your opponent to try to hide his head on the other side to protect himself. And that's what Darian does. He hides the head in the vest. And that's what begins this grotesque mechanism of a submission. AJ goes gable grip with the hands to create an anchor and then triangles those legs at the bottom right above the pelvis. Now, with the base of the spine in traction, he will create more pressure on the top with this little scalene triangle, tightening it up so it is now tight from both ends. This is gross. Now the spinal joints are unique in the body, a curious nucleus surrounded by ligaments, cuffs, and bags made of collagen fiber. The crank creates tears at the microanatomical level, attacking the stability and the very biological integrity of the joint itself. And it's fucking painful. Fundamental human biology, traction at the spine, and an attack forcing the neck into flexion. The human body was not designed to take forces like these. When they are applied, we must submit. This was a spectacular submission from a phenomenal young athlete. AJ McKee owned 2020. He's that much closer to fighting for the Bellator featherweight world title. The Grand Prix win in a million dollars. 2021 looks like it could belong to AJ McKee. Oh, I cannot wait to see that featherweight Grand Prix final. In that final, it will be AJ fighting the winner of Pitbull versus Sanchez. That fight is gonna be stellar, but let's take a look at Pitbull's last fight right now. One of my favorites from 2020. Everybody knows that Patricio Pitbull is a pound for pound great, correct? Correct. 
Go look at my fight secrets on Patricio Pitbull. Pure mastery of a basic combination of techniques. Here, springing in to launch the left hook and using that left hook to set up the turn of the hip and drive the knuckles straight down the pipe. Bink. Mastery of this basic combination of techniques ex applied and expressed at the highest level. Look, this left hook will bash the hand out of the way to make space for the right hand to come down the pipe. But it's the variation that makes it so difficult to deal with. Now that he has just imprinted the right knuckles in the mind of his opponent, he will now imply them, get the response, and it's the left hook coming. But look closely. The knuckles hit the chin and pull the hand. That is next level. That's what happens when you master technique at the highest level throughout a lifetime of preparation and deliberate practice. Patricio Pitbull is one of the great martial artists on planet Earth. 2021, man. First Sanchez, and then if he wins, then AJ McKee or Sanchez versus McKee. However that goes. All right, my friends, before I share with you my analysis of my favorite knockout of 2020, I want to show you these two submissions. Yes, the art and science of these two are Fighting is about something so much more than art and science. All right, Taylor Johnson pulled out this sweet, sweet heel hook, putting pressure, damaging the ligaments and soft tissues of the knee. Yes, the finish is fantastic, but it's the way that it's put together that's so brilliant. It's a philosophy of non-resistance when faced with the ultra-aggressive wrestling of Ed Ruth. Instead of resisting the resistance, he rolls with it. Non-resistance. Look at his foot. He invites this roll and then rolls underneath, hooks that leg, and swings to come up now from the other side. Now, take Take a look. He's got a piece of the appendage here. The left hand is going to post. When it does, he'll try to re-grip with his right arm, posting up, and throw that leg up and over. Now it's about anchoring the pelvic girdle as he applies pressure down at the foot. And you look, this is a long process to get this submission, and that's what makes it so beautiful. Look, the anchor at the top. Now he'll start fishing for that knob of the heel. Watch right there. Now he's got it. The attack begins, but look, his man is almost out, it, trying to extract that leg leg, but you stay with it. This is not a catch. It's not an either or. It's not binary. It's not zero or one. It's a process of hard work, slow inches, uh, grabbing the millimeters, winning the small battles, pressure up at the hip, and again he's got that heel, turning the body in one direction and the heel in the other, putting the pressure on the outside of the knee, the soft tissues around the knob of the knee, the ligaments and the tendons until he damages that tissue and forces his man to tap. Taylor Johnson pulls off a wonderful submission against an elite of the elite in wrestling. Now my friends, this submission is a thing of beauty. It's a masterful technique, but you see, I'm not just going to break down the submission right now. I promise you I will on social media, on Bellator and my Instagram, Twitter, all that nonsense in the coming days. But this one to me is about more than just the technique we see here as Neiman Gracie cranking up on the heel. Yes, it is wonderful, wonderful expression of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and martial artistry, but this is what fighting is about right here. This is unique to fighting, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the humanhood, as these two men sharing the moments that they just shared physically now, sharing them verbally and, and appreciating each other for the time that they spent. Nobody knows what you went through in a fight except for the other man. And as the great John Fitch says goodbye to a wonderful career, he is celebrated and appreciated by young Neiman Gracie, who himself will move forward on his own quest towards the top. John Fitch, thank you for a wonderful career. And Neiman Gracie, baby. The best is yet to come. A wonderful submission and a wonderful display of the truth of martial artistry. What time is it? Oh yeah. Random tangent! My friends, I like to say that fighting is a metaphor for life itself. 2020 has been incredibly stressful, just like a fight. Why has it been so stressful? Uncertainty, right? just like a fight, the uncertainty of what will happen. I always find this to be relaxing. The world is always uncertain. Any type of stability is an illusion that we create. There is uncertainty in all moments of our life and you have lived just fine, just comfortably, just successfully in moments of uncertainty every moment of your life. You can live in the uncertainty that we're living in now. Maybe that will give you comfort. Or maybe you'll just think I'm fucking crazy. 
it's time for my favorite knockout of 2020. I keep saying favorite instead of best. Remember, art is subjective and it is not a competition. Every art piece, every artist is different, is unique. But hey, this one's my favorite. I do like watching the very best, but I also like to see artists actualize themselves to their full potential. Big. That's a fastball of a right hand. Overhand, it's a pitch. That one was a 6-6 sick, sick knockout. Now take a look. The man has thrice thrown kicks or knees with the same leg. Aaron will step to the outside and measure and pull something with his jab, but he will make that knee redundant as he fires that fastball. It is like a cue ball in a pillowcase, loose and elastic as he fires it over the top. He creates tension when he throws, relaxation in the middle, and tension when he lands. His man gave away the secrets, and he had nowhere to go, pushed against that fence. So Aaron will step to the outside, slide his head off that line, and bink, fire that right hand over. There's something about particular artists and particular pieces of art that attract our eye. There's something aesthetically pleasing, bink about this shot. And there's something very, very exciting about young Aaron Pico. Yes, he's firing and he's fighting and he's performing at the highest level. But I got a feeling in 2021 and beyond, we're going to see this guy do some things we've never seen before. There you have it. Some of my favorite moments from Bellator in 2020. Thank you so much for hanging with me. And thank you for watching Fight Secrets. It's been a true joy to develop this series with the team at Bellator and analyze and celebrate these wonderful artists. Yeah, 2020 has been a fucking weird year. But hey, 2021's coming up. Thank you so much again for watching. Thank you for spending your time with me. And hey, subscribe and like and hit notifications and all that shit. I will see you next year. It is my privilege to share these with you. Thank you again. Much love. And enjoy the hostilities, my friend.